Hi, Alan Combies here, Transformational Coach, and in this next video, I took some bits and pieces from a talk that I gave in front of a small group, and this group was all about introducing and understanding and tools and techniques to really help one navigate life. It's things that I've applied to my life and things that I help my clients with. I really just tried to sort of highlight uh, some information that I thought might be helpful to you as it's been helpful to me. So without further ado, here's the video. So the main way I work with, with people is I operate from a premise of what is, what is a problem? Right. Nobody really would look for any sort of self-improvement or uh, personal development program if they didn't feel like they had some sort of problem, right? And so I always like to start with, what is a problem? Like what, what is the definition of a problem? And I operate from the premise that a problem is a felt experience. In other words, if you didn't have an uncomfortable feeling, would you have a problem? Right? So it may seem like our problems are coming from outside of us. Maybe it's our relationship or maybe it's our work environment, or maybe, you know, we're trying to figure out our purpose or, um, you know, it could be a number of things. Right. And it seems like it's coming from our outside experiences, but really what's going on is we're having an uncomfortable feeling. It's stress. We could, we could generalize it as a stress, right? And so what is, what is stress? That's the next question. Well, stress is an internal reaction. Once again, right? It's our body's reaction. Well, what is it reacting to? It's it, we've sort of been conditioned to believe that losing our job is creating us, giving us stress. The relationship breakup is giving us stress. The moving, we got to move, that's giving us stress. The pandemic, that's giving us stress. Politics are giving us stress. Right? So we have this indoctrination into thinking that it's the outside world that's creating stress in our body. But the fact of the matter is stress is an internal production. It's a feeling, right? It's our nervous system. Now, there is a difference. Like if I uh, you know, if I pick up some heavy weights, that's, that's physical stress on the body. But of course, what we're talking about is the kind of stress where you could be sitting in a quiet room in the lotus position and still feel stress, can't you? And so that's what we're talking about. Stress is a reaction to one thing and one thing only. It's a reaction to the thoughts that we are experiencing or preoccupied with in any given moment. So if I have a problem at work, it's not the circumstances that are creating the stress. It's the thinking I have around those circumstances that are creating the stress in my body. Right? So a good way to, to look at this is thoughts and feelings are really two sides of the same coin. We can't really have a feeling without thought. Now that doesn't always mean we know what thought is creating the feeling because a lot of feelings are conditioned. A lot of feelings are uh, habitual or unconscious, right? We've been thinking them on and on and again and again and again, that we just sort of wear them like a tight suit and we don't recognize when the thoughts are occurring to us and creating the uncomfortable feeling. And then there's those times that you've probably experienced it, right? Where maybe you're like driving or something, or you're in the shower and you have this memory pop into your head and you're like, Ooh, I remember that. Oh, I wish I had done that differently. Or, Oh yeah, I, I did this or I did that, or I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done this. Right. And it just sort of pops in there, but you feel it immediately. Right. So these are all ways the sort of the, the the spectrum of how thought can affect our our nervous system and of course anxiety is a, is a big label for stress that we can feel and anxiety is typically making up a future that uh, is less than desirable putting our conscious awareness attention on those thoughts and feeling 
that anxiety. So it's making up a future event that hasn't happened and sort of ruminating on it and creating that fight or flight because, you know, our bodies, you've probably, you're probably familiar with this. Our bodies aren't, uh, our nervous system can't recognize the difference between what we're experiencing in our environment versus what we're experiencing in our thought generated world. This is what happens as we, as we, speaking of anxiety, let's say, as we're making up a future event that hasn't happened, but we're, you know, creating these thoughts or feeding our attention and awareness to these thoughts that are in turn uh, igniting our fight or flight and, and, you know, cortisol and adrenaline and all of those things. Our body is reacting to thought. Most of the time, we're living in a world where we are preoccupied with all kinds of thoughts. This is why, you know, the whole idea of Eckhart Tolle and the, and the power of now, right? Got to be in the now or Stephen Kotler and, and the work and studies he's done on flow. Flow is the art of dropping out of our thinking and dropping into the moment. Yeah. And so that's really how I see my work. I see it as an opportunity and a, and a, and a tool that helps us drop out of our stressful thinking, drop back into the moment so we can have more clarity. We can have more clarity on the moment. You see, when when we are focused on a problem, if a problem is stress, and stress is an internal reaction to thoughts that we're focused on in that moment, as long as my attention and awareness are zeroed in on those thoughts, there's 400 billion bits of information that I'm missing out on because I'm zeroing in on those problem thoughts. One of my favorite tools is tapping for the purpose of loosening the grip or the, infa the innocent infatuation that we have with those thoughts so that we can pull back from them and expand our awareness, expand our consciousness and really see that we have more options. I really see I mean, if we think about this logically, if we're in that sort of fight or flight response, what's actually happening in the body? Is our intelligence going up or is it going down? Well, if I'm in a fight or flight or freeze response, all systems are really being diverted to the body, right? To either stand and, and fight or run like heck or just completely check out, right? The freeze response. And so by definition, my energy is being diverted from my brain and putting being put into my body. So my intelligence actually goes down in those moments. And so again, by waking up to what we're actually experiencing in any given moment, that is a preoccupation, the thought in the moment that's creating an uncomfortable feeling. And we apply something like this tool, we're able to step again, step away from break free from have insight around the nature of that experience. And oftentimes it just takes a little bit to create enough space for new thought to come in, a better feeling thought, insight, wisdom, right? New awareness. Here's my, my take on, on some of this. It's like, we've been so conditioned to not accept our feelings. I mean, if you think about it, when we were all, young children, most of us were kind of conditioned that it wasn't okay to, to emote. We were sort of in it. We we're sort of taught that emotions are bad. In, in other words, if we cry too loud, it makes, it made adults uncomfortable. And we were told to, you know, sh 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 be quiet. Don't be, you know, kids to be seen, seen, not heard. You know, if we threw a tantrum, maybe we we're spanked uh, or told to sit down and shut up, that kind of thing. And so you can imagine as a young child, what is the message that we get there? Well, we don't know the difference between our emotions and, and our souls at that point, right? So we think if our emotions are coming through, and by the way, at that age, we're just trying to process all that stuff. We're experiencing all these emotions for the first time and they're flooding through our system. We're just trying to navigate it, right? And so when we're told that those aren't, that we shouldn't be doing that, it's very easy for us to think, oh, then I'm not, you know, those, well, those feelings are me. 
and those feelings aren't good. So I must not be good. So I, you know, I definitely don't want to feel these feelings. They're bad. They mean I'm bad. And of course that's complete and utter bullshit, but we're innocently taught that, you know, generation after generation. And so when we have something like a breakup or, or grief, you know, or, or any of those things, we, we tend to want to squash those feelings away or, or move them aside or numb them out, pretend they're not there, you know, eat them away, shop them away, sex them away, drug them away, you name it. One of the most powerful things we can begin to do is recognize what those feelings actually are. They're, they're signaling a preoccupation with thought. Once we see that, and, and tapping can really help us do this, once we see that, we can allow those feelings to actually move through us, allow them to move through us so that the nervous system can actually process it. You know, once the nervous system realizes that, oh, okay, I'm sort of spinning out or looping on this thought right now, but it's just, it's just thought. There's a less, yes, there's lessons, right? We can learn a lesson. But oftentimes what we're doing is we're, we're giving meaning to these thoughts like, oh, this happened because I'm not a good person. This happened because uh, I'm not smart enough. This happened because I'm not good looking enough. This happened because uh, whatever. And so we give meaning to it. Again, it's that conditioning. Bad feeling means I'm broken somehow, right? But if we just stand in that feeling and admit and accept that, oh, I thought this feeling meant I wasn't good enough. Can I accept in this moment that that's what I was thinking, that I'm, I wasn't good enough? Well, again, that's, that's a bunch of BS because you're a divine expression of the freaking universe, right? In fact, the reason those feelings are so uncomfortable is because they're not jiving with your true essence, your true self. You've heard the expression, I'm sure, that you are not your thinking, you're not your feelings, you're not even your body. You're the one witnessing all of that. You're the one breathing life into all of that. And so allowing yourself to see the BS of the innocent meaning that we are giving to those feelings and sensations and thoughts, we can sit in it, use something like tapping if we need to, to move through it, allowing your nervous system to calibrate, recalibrate itself and come back to a, a state of homeostasis. Again, this is in my, the way I see it is it's an expansion of our awareness, expansion of our consciousness, expansion of your understanding. And, and it's really a way to gain more clarity in life and to, you know, come from more, a more grounded perspective. Now, of course, the nature of life is we're going to be in and out of shit all the time, right? We're going to be thoughts come and go. So it looks to me like the more we're aware of what's actually happening, doesn't mean we're not going to get swept away, but we're going to wake up more and more. And if we find ourselves, you know, in a sort of rut of uncomfortable feelings, well, it means wherever we're not seeing the truth of who we truly are and how our experience is being created, wherever we're having a problem is where we really need to reflect and to get curious. And that really sums up my work with my clients. It's about getting curious with them, working together and getting curious as to what they're seeing, what they're not seeing in regards to whatever problem, challenge, pain, issues, and then they're up against. I love it, Alan. I was so excited about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this valuable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit the notification bell to be reminded of when I put out videos like this every week. All right. Until next time, this is Alan Combe's Transformational Coach. This is Morning Coffee with Alan. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.